What a news week. Outnumbered over time. OT baby. And news continues to be made. Uh, Donald Trump is speaking as we come live now, uh, Facebook Live. We want to thank you for joining us there. Outnumbered over time. So uh, the live chat's cooking. Todd H. just tweeted me this, and I've gotten a lot of tweets about this. And Charles Krauthammer made a point on Special Report the other night about this. This tweet says, in France, all semi-automatic gun, automatic guns, rifles, and handguns are illegal. Paris terrorists had them anyway. Terrorists don't follow laws. Absolutely. And that's just such an easy point to make here. Yeah. I mean, if you're going to, if you intend to kill in a, in a mass killing, like that, you're going to kill. What, what is, yeah, what is, what is the position the, the, the anti-gun uh, activists support? get rid of all guns in America? Because first of all, that'll never happen. This country was founded with the Wild West. Everybody had guns. Right now, there are more guns on the street in America than there are living people in America. So how would you ever get them? So the bottom line is outlawing them does not do anything. We outlawed cocaine. We outlawed heroin. We outlawed meth. You can still get it if you're a middle schooler. Yes. But, but, but Bill Clinton jumped into that fray and, you know, said rather inelegantly, in this case, so many fewer people would be dead if he didn't have this weapon. And that's always the response and, and to you, it. I mean, I don't think that makes the people well, who are still dead. Well, he said two things. He said if the guy had had a pistol, right. they might have stopped him. But then you would have had more people dead because it was dark in there. And you I'm know, like, well, wait a minute. You know what the counter to that is? The counter that you're going to hear from the pro-gun is... Three, uh, five, three hours, three hours this went on, people cowering. If one person in there had a handgun, they would have killed him and it would have ended very quickly because he yeah. just casually went along reloading. But then you all of a sudden you're in a discussion of uh, people at a bar drinking exactly. with a gun on them. Exactly, plate. which is you really want people in a bar where, you know, where there's alcohol and tempers can flare carrying guns. I just, but, the, but what they've done, though, is the entire discussion has now gone to guns and removing guns from, from, from law-abiding Americans rather than what in, inspired exactly. this guy to carry out yeah. this attack in the first place. No, my, my, fo my focus is on, on the terror watch list. <laughs> I just think that that's not a bad preventive measure to take. It's a, the inconvenience it is is not that massive, and if you already have people who we're not, we don't trust to fly. Uh, right. Why do we trust them to go out and buy a gun? That's that's my focus. Well, how about if you have been looked at by the FBI twice, and then you fly to Syria? I mean, to Saudi, uh, Arabia, to twice. Saudi Arabia twice, and you've been hanging out with the world's first known American suicide bomber who went to Syria. How about if that's in your background? Now, Can we disclose any of that? Now, here, but here's the problem: the real technical problem with that is. <laughs> If you give the government the opportunity to go in and say, we don't want Harris to have these, uh, the ability to buy weapons because of these reasons. When well, Harris, that last when, one, when, hanging out with the suicide bomber, that, that should right. get me off the list. But, <laughs> yeah. but what, what happens then is when Harris goes to buy a weapon and finds out that she can't buy a weapon because she's on the watch list. She's going to be extra angry? She's going to be alerted <laughs> to the fact that she's being, she's being watched, number one. And number two, she's probably going to have a, you're going to have a right. Yeah. She's going to have a due he process right. He knew he right. was being watched. But she's going to have a due process right to okay. determine what decisions the government made, what they knew, and why yes, they I'd rather have him still, I mean, fighting in court than the, the free time to go out and kill people. Oh, no, I, yeah. would, I would too, but I'm saying sometimes the government doesn't want to show their cards. They don't want this person to know that they knew he traveled to Saudi Arabia or that they know that he... That he well, they should have shown those more cards careful. to all the people who were around him. I, I know, and also then he's more careful with what he's doing. I mean, we want him to be more careful. We want him to not feel like he has the freedom to go out and commit these sort of acts. I don't know. I mean, it's sort of like I think the rest of America is sitting back and saying this is the same old back and forth that we always have every time this happens. Every time there's and a you look at maybe is there a way to advance the conversation? I mean, President Obama said, I want to keep terrorists from being able to just walk out and buy guns. Now, uh, Donald Trump tweeting out that he's going to be sitting down with the NRA to try to talk to them about this idea of having the not allowing people that are on the FBI's watch list to go and buy weapons. I mean, I think that a lot of Americans out there would like to see the conversation change even slightly because we just all keep fighting past each other with the exact same points. I think if Democrats would stick to background checks and watch lists, they would have a lot of public support. Absolutely. behind. Yeah. I think the fear arises that when you start to use common sense and you start <clears throat> to say, well, why are you depriving regular law abiding citizens of access to the same kinds of weapons that criminals have? That doesn't make sense to me. If a criminal can get an AR-15 or whatever the gun of choice is that the anti-gun lobby wants to pick on, why should I not be able to be armed with that same vehicle to protect myself? That's antithetical to common sense. But I think when you talk about background checks and you talk about these people in a situation like Harris just described, any, any person with common sense will also sit back and say, okay, you know what? That person should not have been able to access these kinds of weapons. So there has to be middle ground. And I think if they would just, if everyone would put on a common sense thinking cap, which I know is asking a lot, 
lot of people in D.C. sometimes, I think there would be some coming together on that point. Uh, Malou, um, that's the problem, though. Mariluce Morgado on Facebook Live says common sense is no longer common for some. It's, a, it's scary and sad. And, and in Washington, that's why if you look at congressional approval ratings, regular people sitting at home can't stand these politicians yeah. because they're sitting at home saying, hold on a second, I'm not, you know, an Einstein here and I'm not this or that. I mean, I say it about myself all the time, but I figured this out. This is not difficult to figure out. Why, why are they, you know, and the reason is that they're more interested in scoring political points and they feel like if a tragedy happens, they can go all the way. This is their opportunity to do A through Z as opposed to just looking at A through D, which everyone kind of agrees upon. Right. Right. So, I think there are a lot of people around the country that's that, I mean, when you ha you're talking about common sense, who look at that and say, who needs that weapon? I mean, there are a lot of people that say that, who look at it and say, what, what does a regular person need that weapon for anyway? Why is it out there? I mean, what's the answer to that? It's not that weapon isn't any really different than any other weapon. It's a semi-automatic rifle. You hear Bernie Sanders say he had a machine gun or, or an assault <laughs> rifle, and it's just complete garbage. You, if you take an AR-15, the, its capability really isn't that different from any other handgun. It, it looks scary. Pull, it looks. It's made <laughs> to look. Visually, it's made to look like yeah. an, like an M16 or one right. of those automatic rifles. But if you pull the trigger, you get one bullet. Just right. like if you have a gun, you pull the trigger, you get one bullet. Mm -hmm. It's a rifle, so it's a little more accurate. Every rifle's a little more accurate, but it'd be like a Winchester where you, you pull a shot, the trigger. It's, it's similar to walking with a 12-gauge, right? Well, no, right. You, you, have a, you have a bigger spread with a 12-gauge. You can hurt, hurt a lot more people with a 12-gauge. No, that's what I'm saying. I was talking to a, a, somebody yesterday who was making that very same point. I could walk in there with my deer rifle and, make, and, and have a bigger problem. All right, Grammy4 is writing into our online chat, which thank you, everybody, for joining us. A lot of you are on here right now. Um, Transitioning to our top story when we broke in uh, with the news conference on the alligator sure. and this this uh, it's just un, this unthinkable uh, thing that has happened with this uh, toddler disappearing possibly in the mouth of the, this this reptile. Disney and other Florida attractions have a responsibility, she says, to their visitors to educate them on the native animals and reptiles that are dangerous and can be found throughout the state. Do you think that Disney has an obligation to make people very well aware you're in Florida? And we do have alligators that are yeah, yes and no. Walking I mean, about. I, I think, I think yes, I think that people, if you're going to be a tourist attraction, you're going to Maybe invite, they do, I don't know. Gonna, yeah, I think so, because you're inviting people from all over the world to come to your tourist attraction. You create a man-made lake. You created the lake that the gator's right. in. Right, so that's if part you, of it. So if you know that there's a gator in there, because they do, that's why, and they have those no swimming signs, it, it, they're going to get sued over inadequacy of warning. That's what we're going to get sued about. Because uh, telling people no swimming, because they, they rent little boats. They rent little skiffs for people to ride around in the lake. So telling people no swimming doesn't tell them it's not about the boats. It's about there's a creature in there that might grab your child and pull it underwater. So they're going to get sued over that. Yeah. And their claim, of course, will be, look, That's, you know, we, con yeah. we don't control the alligators. You know, I heard you talking during one of the breaks about, you know, just wildlife and where we are. You had Harambe, the ape. Yeah. And the little one that got in, in that enclosure. And, and then you have this situation. I mean, obviously, they're very different. But you made the comment that there's some things that need to change. No, I think that precautions can be taken. The zoo example we gave, you know, it's always a balance between protecting the, the audience that's there and making it look as natural a habitat as possible. But, but to have a little fence that a kid can scamper over and then nothing to slow them down. Um, I think there were steps that could have been taken. I think either a, a higher fence or maybe a second obstacle before he gets to the pit, because you know you're you're bringing everybody there, and you know for for monetary reasons, of course, for commercial gain. Mm -hmm. and, and you should realize that a lot of the ones who come there are going to be kids who show very poor judgment. And no question, the parents obviously have a duty to protect, to watch their children. But you, it's kind of foreseeable that they're going to bring, especially when you have like a school that comes with 30 kids to the right. zoo. Right. Well, you know, that wasn't the case. In no, this, but I mean, you're always going to have those opportunities, those uh, problems. Just to, we're going to kind of go back and forth with these uh, topics because the live chat and Facebook live are Whoa, fierce cooking. right now. Uh, Kevin Dubuque says, uh, to protect yourself, a pistol will do. That's what you were saying. Well, I, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm not a gun owner, so I don't, it's just that I know that that's what a lot of people who stop me on the street or, you know, are on Twitter or on, a, that's the other side of the argument is they kind of look at all these different weapons and say, you know, who, who needs these? What are these for? And so I'm not saying they're right or wrong, but as we try to advance the discussion past the normal talking points, or like you said, put in, that's what that side thinks is common sense. The other side, you know, is that if you're going to break the law, you're going to break the law to get the weapon too. That is also mm -hmm. common sense. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of why, as these politicians talk past each other, everybody at home is going, well, yeah. yeah, like my argument against that when people say, well, why do people need these weapons? I say, well, why not? 
why not? Why can't a law-abiding citizen have access once again to the same kind of weaponry that a criminal would have? There's no, there's no common sense justification where I would. Why not? If it, if it, if it, if it maybe that's visually, aesthetically, what they want their gun to look like. I mean, I, I'm, who am I to tell them the what point. their Second Amendment rights should the, look the like? The point is, the people, the people. Who, very often the people who say, why does anybody need a weapon like this, don't understand what a weapon like this is. They think it's a machine gun. They think it's a... Uh, they think it's an automatic. Yeah, they think that's, it's a fully automatic weapon. With, and like you watch the Terminator and they think that's what it is. And so if you said to, the, if you said to that person, what is the difference between that AR-15 semi-automatic rifle and a handgun that you feel comfortable with? The answer would at best be, it, hold, it you can get a magazine with more bullets in it. Right. Okay, but this guy went around reloading for three hours. And the, and the Columbine yeah. kids, the Columbine kids was during the Brady Bill where they couldn't buy the extended magazines and all they did was bring a bunch of magazines and went through the school going release reload release reload yeah. it doesn't really do much of anything to yeah. other than make politicians feel good like they did something mm -hmm. all right on our way out we know that donald trump is due to meet oh, with yeah. the nra right okay and uh and reports that there could be a concession we'll, we'll have to see what happens what his conversations with the nra one would, would think like. that even if the nra is not willing to change a thing about their beliefs on this is that at least they can meet with whoever invites them to educate them on their beliefs there you go we'll see you on tv tomorrow at noon eastern All right.